So hello everyone. Uh, welcome again to another uh, another chapter of CAST Academy uh, offered here by Tigera. My name is Christopher Lillian Stolpe. I'm the CTO for Solutions here at Tigera uh, and I'm one of the co-founders of, of Tigera as well. One of my jobs as uh, CTO for Solutions is actually working with customers not only in, in helping them adopt Tigera's solutions, uh, but also helping them in general understand uh, this journey uh, and helping them through this journey uh, into a, a container as a service platform or a Kubernetes as a service platform. I, we touch one part and we, we are a, a substantial component in, in, in these platforms doing all the network, network policy, network security. Uh, but we also have a lot of experience in dealing with the, the overall ecosystem. Uh, we've been through this transition with, with a large number of customers and even larger user base. So we've seen some things that work and some things that don't and some things that trip people up. So we've been talking about throughout this series uh, a number of technical issues. Uh, and we've had some people speaking about other sections or spaces in, in the ecosystem. Uh, and, and the technical challenges there. But I want to start up a level this a little bit now and talk about some of the larger issues that, that frankly are almost usually the biggest stumbling box when someone is adopting a concept of moving to a container native or a, a environment or a container as a service platform. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about what some of those larger fundamental changes are and uh, some of the things you can look for and, and, and think about now rather than dealing with later. So let's think about some of these options. The first one I want to talk about is splat as a service. So you know we talk about load balancing as a service, we talk about network as a service, talk about all these different things as a service. But you know, what really software as a service being, you know, the, the key one, but splat as a service. The whole idea about going to a Kubernetes as a service or containers as a service model is to bring, you know, splat as a service, you know, services as a service to your infrastructure. People normally think of this in terms of software. You know, I am going to create a customer records infrastructure. I'm going to offer that as a service to other platforms in my organization. I am going to come up with a payments as a service platform and I'm going to offer that to, to every all the properties in my organization or even external to my organization that might need to process payments. But there are other things as well. So what are the advantages of, of Splat as a service? It means that each community, each user base, doesn't need to run this themselves. They can just consume it. And there's a well-defined API, if you want to think of it, or a well-defined access mechanism that says, if you need to do a payment, just make this call, call this microservice with this bit of data, and we'll take care of the rest. And it makes developing modular applications and, and rapidly prototyping and, and deploying new services, very easy. This isn't just for application development though. This can also be used, and we're seeing this being used more and more frequently, for the underlying infrastructure itself. So if we start thinking about Splat as a service, in fact, containers as a service or Kubernetes as a service is exactly that. It's Splat as a service. It is instead of every group running their own Kubernetes as a service and their own Kubernetes clusters or their own container clusters. Just consume the, the Kubernetes as a service from the folks who understand in your organization how to run Kubernetes. But it doesn't really start there, stop there. If you think about it in an infrastructure, everything you're writing, or in, in the application environment as well, everything you're writing, everything you're doing is going to be consumed by something else. Otherwise, why are you doing it? Similarly, the things you're writing are probably consuming other services. So 
traditionally what we have done if we, is we have built infrastructure. So at the infrastructure later, layer, we have storage. We have network. We have compute. Some people would put even databases and other things down here. So you have a bunch of infrastructure that's common or shared. Then there's some kind of virtualization or brokering layer that normally sits on top of this. Isn't that squeak annoying? And above this, I have my application stacks. App one. We normally build applications. And this is great when things are mainly north south. Traffic would come in for app one from the outside of your infrastructure. App one would then use this virtualization layer and the underlying infrastructure to process the request and send it out. But as we built more of a microservices environment, the traffic going through here, you know. isn't taking just this path anymore. The traffic now, you know, might, this app one might make a call out to a service that originally had been in app two. App two is gonna make its own calls to make that so. It might, you know, app one might also call to app three for the same thing, this thing in app two that you called might make a call to something in app four. So if you look at it now, what we've done, whether we intended to or not, is our applications are now just services that service other applications. In fact, most of the traffic and a lot of the folks who are, have gone down this road is east-west. It's between applications or between microservice components of those applications, not north-south. So we need to start thinking about all of these things is actually being consumable services. That's splat as a service, software as a service, etc. So this is a model that we have done, and this is one of the reasons why you're doing a container as a service or a Kubernetes as a service, because most of the development here now is microservices, and they need to be orchestrated by something like Kubernetes, and that's then we're building a common platform to do that. However, you can take this the next logical step. Today, in more and more of these platforms, storage isn't its own dedicated hardware. Storage is running on the same compute platforms, very likely, that are hosting the applications. Network, especially in the, if you take an attack like Tigera and, and our open source project Calico as well, is most of the networking is being done on the same hardware as well. So really now the question that you need to start asking yourself is, is even infrastructure maybe just a service? Storage, if you're using something like Rook or Portworks, that's just a set of Kubernetes, potentially, pods offering storage based on you know, using disk spinning and all the compute nodes. Same thing on networking in Tigera. Uh, the networking layer and the network policy and enforcement is nothing more than Kubernetes pods running on those same compute nodes. And in fact, Kubernetes itself is taken over this level. And we're already talking about Kubernetes as a service or containers as a service. So do we now need to start thinking about things 
not as we have the infrastructure team and we have the applications team, but is every applications team or every team both developing applications that offer services to other components and consume services from other components. Rather than having this artificial split now, do we really say in this new model that everything is actually a service? So if I really start thinking about what this might actually look like, um, I need to erase this whiteboard, so I'm gonna do that. You don't have to watch me do that. Then we're gonna talk about what this actually might look like from a real architectural standpoint. So uh, come back in just a second after I get done erasing this whiteboard or this light board. So um, we were talking about Splat as a service and how that may not just apply to, to application code anymore, but may actually apply to your underlying, what we used to consider infrastructure as well. So there will still be infrastructure, physical infrastructure. And just that so that scope is decreasing over time. So if we think about it in a data center, I might have some number of switches. I'm just drawing up a, a three switch cloth fabric. You would probably have much more. And then this is going to a border router. Network, rest of network. This is irrefutably still physical infrastructure. It's going to continue to be that way. And let's say I now have some number of nodes. Again, I'd probably have lots of nodes in a cluster, but I'm just going to draw a couple here, mainly because I'm lazy. These nodes are connected to the network. And these nodes might have disk on them. Most well, certainly will have disk on them. some disk on these. This is definitely all physical infrastructure. This is not something Splat as a service per se. These are still somebody's got to rack and stack these, connect these, manage these switches. Although frankly, the configuration of these things, the switches, the servers, etc., is now also becoming very software defined um, using even YAML files, etc., and tools that will allow you to automatically bring up your cluster once you've defined what your cluster is. But we're still going to consider this infrastructure. So I have compute, uh, has disks on it, has network cards. Those network cards are physically cabled to switches. Those switches get you out to the outside world. So this is probably still infrastructure. And this will probably stay sort of the people who deal with this are, you know, may or may not be the folks doing the rest of the services. So this is this, but you'll notice there's a lot less infrastructure here than, than what we've previously considered. Also, because more and more things are going to be happening in software now, the capabilities of these switches and the rest of the network are also somewhat diminished. Uh, you basically need good, solid, high-speed connectivity. As networking and storage and other things devolve into these switches, into the actual servers, the amount of features I need up here does also decrease. But now. You know, how does, you know, how does somebody writing an application, how do they, so I've got an application here, and say I've got an application pod here, app one, and app one 
needs access to some things. So app one needs access to a database. So somewhere, another software team, if you want to think of it that way, another services team has deployed a database. It's running on a couple of different nodes. But there is now a database service for App 1 to consume. This is not infrastructure. This is just another services team. If you start thinking now of everything that apps for his infrastructure, think about services. Now the database needs access to storage. So you've got a services team that does storage. And so storage might actually have a pod, a set of Kubernetes pods and deployment. Running on some or all of the nodes that offer storage to other services, including databases. So, you know, these storage nodes mediate access to disks. Help, you know, basically, you say I need object foo or I need block bar. Thus, you make that request via standard APIs, be it AWS S3 APIs, be it uh, standard POSIX file, you know, objects as in, uh, uh, you know, blocks as, as in using iSCSI or whatever, although that's sort of diminishing over time in this kind of environment. So the storage service exposes those kind of APIs to the DB side. So now, if we think about it from a service graph standpoint, a1 makes a call to one of the nodes offering database. The database node makes a call to a service node, may get redirected to a storage node, to another storage node, which makes retrieves the, the, the object, say, one copy of which is stored on this disk. So storage now and databases look nothing more than basically another application. They are treated the same way. They are deployed using your container as a service mechanism, your Kubernetes. These are lifecycle through Kubernetes. You tell Kubernetes, I need this main database servers. Uh, they need to mount these volumes or they need access to this, these set of storage APIs. The storage uh, folks, whoever they are, are deploying Kubernetes pods. Uh, might be Rook. It 